Hi, welcome to Pay It Forward. I was in a very colourful mood this week. Can you tell? You can tell by today's project. I decided to create a little designer tote. This one is fully lined. It's got a little pocket inside and a, a nice base. So it's nice, stable, very roomy um, and great for a, sta a stash buster. So you can use up all of your scraps as I did here and uh, a very happy project to make. So I've got your free pattern all ready for you and all you need to do is find that link. It's in the description box below. Also, I will put it number one in the comments for you. You'll find your free pattern templates and you can print those out on your own home printer. So make sure that you do set your printer to be printing at actual size in the settings so that all of those pieces will be absolutely right for you. And remember that I include all seam allowances in all of my patterns. So who's ready to make a very colorful little tote? So let's start with our materials and requirements. Now, what I start with, we're going to be, well, I'm going to be doing a quilt as you go method on one side of our outer bag, and that's going to have our little butterfly in the middle. So what you start with, I've given you your measurements there with your pattern templates, is your rectangular fabric, which is interfaced. I have fusible woven interfacing um, on there. That's already, that's actually that side. So I've just gone with white because it's not going to interfere with any of my colors that I'm going to add over the top of that. So on top of that, we will be adding our starter piece which is the, the center panel for our butterfly. Now, you doesn't have to be a butterfly, obviously. This center panel, you can add anything to this. You may even just want to fussy cut uh, an image from a piece of fabric that you have and make that as a centerpiece. You could make it flowers, absolutely anything you like. I think even my little needle book, um, Westie, will fit on here. I will pull that out later and show that to you. You could even make that the center point. So there's so many ways to theme this bag and change it up really easily. So on that panel, that little panel is, um, I've gone for a lighter color, a neutral, and it's got fusible webbing on the back ready for us to press on there. And then we're going to be adding our strips all the way around. So I've got a series of strips already cut. Mine are three centimeters in width and I've made sure that they're long enough to cover that whole template. Um, there will be excess left over, that's fine. I always keep all of my strips. So just a variety of colors that's going to work with my project there. They don't have interfacing on them, that is just the fabric on their own. Of course you can make those strips thinner if you like, but I find that the three centimeters in width covers that template quickly and easily. So then on once that all that strip work is done, we'll be adding our butterfly pieces. So I like to use felt for these pieces. You definitely need to use felt for the top section. This section here, we're going to be pressing on, we're going to be stitching around. So I'm using black felt. And of course you could use any colors. I just like that real um, monarch sort of butterfly look. Then my second piece is cut from double felt. So, and I've got two tones of felt there and that will be added and we will only be stitching through the middle section here. So we get that little bit of lift and 3D look. We're also going to be sewing a little blanket stitch around that one as well. And then I will be adding just a series of little buttons just to add some color and some more detailing. And also you're going to be needing a, a little black button or a bead for the top of the head. Um, and you may want to add a few little beads down the center here, totally up to you. We will be stitching in some antennae there. So the, basically that's covered our fronts. Once we have done our quilting, then we cut our front panel pattern piece from that completed uh, piece and that will look like this. This is the other side of our tote bag. So again, I'm just having the other side just a plain print like this. So it's only the front part of the bag that is decorated. You can of course quilt both sides. That's not a problem. 
Alternatively, if you don't want to be doing all of the, the decorative work, you can just quickly make up this tote in, uh, and just some beautiful prints like this. It's a lovely little bag shape. Um, so we will have, our, this is my back piece of my bag and of course my completed front will be cut to match that. And then we have a base for our bag. So I'm going with that black floral because my lining is going to be that same black floral. So my lining is also cut from fabric with those uh, with that interfacing applied to the back there. And of course I have that extra base piece. Now the, the lining, you'll see that the lining pieces are a little bit longer than your outer bag pieces. There's a reason for that. We're going to be doing a little false binding hem all the way, all the way around the top. So this color here is going to show above the top of the bag. And it's also the color I've chosen for the handles and the loop. So the handles that we've got one either side of our bag, I've got there and they are cut just from fabric. I've got them already pressed and clipped up there. Now the length I've done is 56 centimetres by 6 centimetres. I'll also put those details in with your pattern templates. I just find that makes it a good size. It's an average size for holding a little tote or you can slip it over your shoulder. Definitely uh, change those lengths if you want something longer or maybe you're making it for a much younger child and you want to shorten those straps, go ahead and do that. Uh, that loop is 22 centimetres by 6 centimetres and that is just going to be slipped in between those layers as well. I like to add a little pocket. So I've got one that, that one there ready cut and we'll be sewing those two together. And I've just, again, just used a couple of prints, um, really mixing it up. So this is going to be very much a patchwork bag because I'm using so many different floral prints, but they all work well together. So the other thing you're going to be needing is your fusible wadding. And uh, what you need to do with those, so you've got a pattern piece for the base for your wadding. But with these side panels, you need to cut them to fit your outer bag pieces, but then just take off just about a centimetre all the way around because we don't want those that wadding going into our seams. So it's just to fit anyway. You'll see when I put it all together just how that looks. You're also going to need a button of some description that matches your project that's just for our little just go with our button loop you might want to use a toggle instead something that works ideally a shank button will work best for this project i just don't happen to have one large enough so i'll probably go with that pink one and we're going to need a little bit of some kind of embroidery thread i'm using a eight ply pearl thread in a rainbow for sewing around my butterfly so that's about it. So it's very straightforward. So our first step is to begin on our front butterfly panel. First of all, we need to add our center panel, which will have our butterfly on. This one needs to be seven centimeters exactly from the base of your outer panel. And make sure that it's perfectly centered in the middle because when we go to lay our template over the top of that, we need it to be that far up so it's nice and central on the bag. So I've got that one pressed into place. My next step is to add the butterfly. I've taken off that backing paper because there was fusible web on the back there. I'm going to add my butterfly. I'm going to make sure it's nice and central. And I'm also going to get that one pressed into place. While we don't have anything else added, I like to do my stitching around my butterfly shape, which I will do on the machine, just a straight stitch with a black thread right the way around. I'm also going to, at this stage, stitch in two little antennae. So just draw them in, whatever you like, you can do them straight or curved, just enough. And remember that we're gonna have a little button there as well for the head. So I'm gonna get that one pressed into place and those little details done. I have that center panel and my butterfly in place and you can see I've done my stitching lines there. So our next step is to start building 
our quilting around that panel. So what we do is we start with our first strip and we start by going across the top. We're going to line up those two edges there, right sides together. And I'm just going to stitch across with a four millimeter seam allowance. And once that one is stitched into place, I'm then just going to press that one back. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how we add the next pieces. So there is my first piece stitched on and then I've pressed that back. Make sure you do use your protective cloth when you're doing this to protect your felt there. And so my next step is to add the second piece which goes down and goes right to the edge of this piece lined up with the side there. I'm obviously going to trim that end off and we're just going to stitch the same stitch all the way to the top of this one. And then this one will fold back. And all we need to do is continue on with that building around that shape all the way. Your strips will get longer as you go and keep working and press after every single strip is added because that will give you a really beautiful finish until that entire panel is covered with your quilted pieces. Once you get to the edge, overlap them a little and make sure that the whole thing's covered and we will just trim it off at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep building and building until that whole panel is completely covered. And there you can see I've got all of my quilting done and such a lovely effect. And it's also the shape of this panel echoes the shape of the bag. So it really flows really well. So now that we've got that done, I have just trimmed off my edges so I can really see what I'm dealing with here. And now we're going to cut our front panel to ma match our back panel. Now, when I flip my pattern piece to create that whole pattern piece, you'll see that on your templates, I've got a line down the center. I've, done, I've been able to do that because my fabric is quite dark, but it does help me line it, line it up now with the center of that butterfly. So what I want to do is, I want to be as low down as possible to my edge here because that's the way I've designed it, that you can pull that one right down to as low as you can, making sure you've still got everything covered. And you can follow your centre line and make sure your centre line is lining up with the centre of that butterfly. So that's what's important. Just make sure that it is all lined up, that centre is right in the centre of your butterfly. And then you can pin that if you like, and then you can cut that panel to fit. Once you have your front panel cut to size, you can go ahead and add your wadding to the back and press that on. Now, remember I told you at the beginning to cut your wadding piece just a little smaller all the way around so you can see how that looks there. And you can go ahead and also add your wadding to the back outer piece on the wrong side, of course, and on the wrong side of your base section. And this just gives the bag a nice amount of volume and hold, so it holds itself very well. So now that we have that done, now we're going to finish the detailing on our, our butterfly. And so what I have here is I've got my little top butterfly piece. It's going to sit in there and it's just a really nice finish for us to sew a little blanket stitch, might move that, it's a little distracting in a good way, I hope. Um, and I'm going to sew a tiny blanket stitch around it. So I've just got a knot in the end of my eight ply pearl thread. You can use embroidery thread if you wish. I would use two strands if you're using stranded cotton. And I've just come out on the edge there and I'm going to sew just a very small decorative blanket stitch. I'll put the link at the top there for you if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before so you can see exactly how that's done. So blanket stitch is just simply taking our needle through all of our layers straight through and bringing the needle out through the loop in the thread each time. And that's going to create a little bound edge. I've gone for this little rainbow colour because it it brings in all of the colours I've got in my bag. A couple of stitches there and you can see it's just that little bit of hand detailing that really adds some love to your project. 
So hopefully you can see that there, that little bound edge. I'll just continue around that entire shape. You can see there that I have that blanket stitching all completed and I've gone ahead and added my little decorative buttons. You could add anything you like here, little jewels and all sorts of things would be lovely. And so now I'm going to just pop that one right in the center and take it to my machine and in black, I'm going to sew a straight stitch back and forth and back and forth a few times there just to indicate a little body. And when I do that, I'm gonna be sewing through all of those layers, including that wadding. So it will really pull those in and give you a little bit of lift there. So at the same time, you can go ahead and you can quilt this panel any way you like. Um, I will probably just stitch in my centre panel. I'll stitch right in the ditch there just to really settle that centre panel, but you could really quilt the whole lot. And the same goes for your back piece. You could quilt that one as well any way you like. I'm just going to be leaving mine plain. So I'm going to go ahead and get those little wings into place and I will also sew on my final little head button there. Right, so that has my bag front completed. Anything else that you want to add, now is the time to do it. You can add more embellishments, little buttons. Um, also, if you want a, a more of a 3D effect to go with the, the butterfly, go ahead and add some little fabric yo-yo flowers would look beautiful around one or two corners here. Go right ahead and be very creative. So now oh, we're going to put our bag, start to put our bag together. So what we're going to do is put our bag front and back right sides together. And this is our outer bag, of course. And we're gonna line them up and we're gonna stitch just the side seams. And my seam allowance is five millimeters or about half a centimeter. So make sure that you're back and forth on your start and finish and make sure that everything is well lined up. So I have my side seam stitched and I've pressed those seams open and flat on both sides. And now we're going to take our outer base piece which has our wadding on it, and we're gonna put right sides together. You've got marks on your pattern piece, on your base section, and you want to line up that center mark with your side seam. And you want to put your pin straight through that seam allowance of five millimeters. Take it through, take a little bit up on the other side, push that pin head all the way down. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're going to do the same on the other side with the other side seam, making sure that side seam's open, keeps everything nice and flat when we put it together. Put that pin through, take up a little on the other side and pin head all the way down. Now all you need to do is pin that one right the way around in the same way and you'll find it will fit beautifully. If you've kept to your seam allowances, everything will fit really well. So I'm gonna get that all pinned in. And now we're ready to sew that seam, that same five millimeter seam allowance all the way around. I like to hand sew just an overcasting stitch over the end of each curve first. It just holds everything in place and makes sure those side joins are centered and then I will go ahead and stitch all the way around. Once you have that base stitched into place, turn it through like I have here and roll all those seams out. Make sure that you've got, you've caught everything in those seams. And then we've got, that is our outer bag completed. So now we move on to our lining, which we put together in exactly the same way just about, except for first, if you're got, wanting to add a pocket, just choose one of your pieces. It doesn't matter which one, because they're the same back and front. And we've got our pocket that's going to go on. So what we need to do is just take those two pocket pieces. We're just going to stitch around them and leave an opening for turning. So it's just a little four millimeter seam allowance all the way around. Leave one space open. Then we turn it through, push those corners out and give it a good press. So I have my pocket turned through and pressed and I've pressed that edge under as well. And all we need to do is position that on the right side 
of our inner piece and the best position is about seven centimeters from that top edge and make sure it's nicely centered get that pinned into place and then we just stitch around with a very close little top stitch seam allowance you can divide it if you like to make uh, separate pockets that's entirely up to you and now once that pocket is in place we can now put together the lining in the same way that we did the outer bag pieces so again right sides together back to front we're going to sew those side seams with that same five millimeter seam allowance remember that's important to keep to that so that it all fits when we put it together and then you'll pop in that base piece in exactly the same way as you did with the outer pieces only this time when you go to sew it in leave an opening on one of the long sides so pretty much just on the straight area a reasonable size opening because that's how we're going to pull the whole bag through so put it all together exactly the same as we did before so that completes my inner bag so what you can see i've turned that one through and there's my opening where we're going to pull everything through now before we join our inside lining to our outer bag we need to create our straps so what i've done here i've already done my straps stitch them i'm going to show you on the little tab here so this is the little loop that goes over our button you can see there that what i've done is i've taken it to my ironing board i've actually ruled a line all the way down the middle i just find that helps me to press into the center so first i press each side into the center to meet like that and then I press it again in half and that gives me a nice neat little strap that's got four layers so it's nice and strong and then all I need to do is just take that to the machine and top stitch along the open side first and then I like to do a second row of stitching down the other side so you get that really nice professional result there a bit hard to see on the black but there it is so you just need to do that with both of your straps and that, uh, that button loop so i have that loop stitched and now i'm i've just folded that into a point you can see what i've done there i've brought those two ends together to create a little point and i've given that a press and now I'm just going to stitch over that same stitching line to hold that little one into place. So now my next step is to add my straps, my handle straps and my loop to the inside with right sides together of the outer bag. So you can see there, I've lined that one up with my center mark. So that will be our button loop, which does up over the front. So make sure that you stitch it onto the back because our button sits on the front of the bag and then you just add your straps and in the same way now the measurement from each side for you to place your straps is seven centimeters so just remember it's been seven centimeters throughout for your key points so seven centimeters from each side just sits at about right lines up with that base so just make sure when you stitch those temporarily into place that your strap is not twisted in there make sure it's gone in there nice and straight and now you've got all of those pieces in we just need to take out the liner of our bag which is we're putting right sides together so the so the liner is the right way and remember that our pocket ideally should be at the back of the bag not the front so this is our decorated front so we're just going to tuck that liner inside and what you're going to do is find your side seams and match them up the lining and the outer bag much like we did with when we were sewing in the bases so you can use pins or clips whatever suits you best open out those seams to match i'll just get my clips and clip that one into place There we go and one thing i will show you that i did on the front of my bag strap 
before I sew it on in place is I've added a little D-ring. I've done that so that it gives me something to hang a bag charm from. So I've just slipped it over there on the front strap and then we know we'll be right. So line up the other side. Again, making sure those seams are open and flat. Ideally, they are pressed out. And then you'll find everything else will line up well. Pull that one out and you can see that little lining is going to fit in beautifully. We just need to clip all the way around that top edge and then I'm going to take that to the machine. Now this is where we're going to be making our little, our little fake binding edge. So the seam that we're going to sew is actually a centimetre. So make it a good centimeter so that that's how much binding we've got showing when we're done. So get it all clipped or pinned into place and then just go right ahead and stitch all the way around, keeping everything lined up. And remember, we can turn it through because we've got the opening in that lining. Now that I have that top seam stitched all the way around, we're not going to trim that seam because we need actually need um, that bulk there to keep our lining sitting up. What we can do though, is just trim off anything you have excess with those tabs. And then we're just going to pull that one all the way through and push out all of those seams. So I've got that one all turned through and before I push it back into the bag, I've turned and pressed that opening under, the opening that we just turned through and I've just top stitched that closed. That's for a nice professional finish. So now we can continue and push that liner inside our bag. And whereas normally we would fold that and press that right on that edge, what we're going to do is let the seam sit up all the way around. So fold it down only to that seam. We want the seam sitting up and that's gonna give that edge all the way around so your seam allowance is sitting up inside there and our liner is folded over so it's much easier to do this on the ironing board and press it as you go so i'm going to go ahead and do that now that i have that edge all pressed all the same height you really can adjust it to be as tall as you wish i'm just trimming all my little ends off here to go over your bag in the end and make sure all of your little threads are cut so I've pressed that in and you can see there, it's easier to see on the inside, that then I've gone around and just stitched right in that seam line, right the way around. So that's holding that lining in place. And because we made that lining, if you remember at the beginning, that little bit longer, it still sits beautifully in there in the base and it's the right size, hard to see in there. So that's your beautiful little bag. Now what we need to do now is to go ahead and just add our final touches, our button right in the center for our loop to come over and that will be done. And I'm going to add, because I've got a nice little D clip there already, I can add a little bag charm and I will probably add a little tassel. So I'll get that on there and show you the finished result. There we go, my completed butterfly tote. What do you all think? I absolutely love it. And if ever you were going to be creative with a project, and put your own stamp on it, this is the one that you can experiment with. Venture outside your comfort zone, the rewards are worth it. Trust me, you could do so many things. Imagine this is a little beach tote and you could put some a little shell design in the middle or perhaps a little crab, um, a little seahorse and use all of your coastal sea type fabrics. That would work so well. You could make it very neutral. You could put a little owl in the center there. Um, if you have a look, you will see my, um, my needle book um, cover that has a little Westie on the front. You could also make that the centerpiece there. So lots of options, go through my videos. You'll find this little tassel in my videos there. And if you're making this one as a gift for somebody, it's really nice to personalize it with a little bag charm. So try one of those. I've also got 
a video for this little charm here and they work so well with all of the different fabrics you can bring one of the fabrics in so check out that video too if you've liked making that bag have a look at this little one too a little special boutique style bag so many options there as well i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, i hope you'll have a whole lot of fun making yours well thank you all for joining me today i hope you've enjoyed seeing this little one come together i can't believe i made something useful i never make useful things do i i know i'm as shocked as you all are um, but it was a whole lot of fun and added a whole lot of color to my week um, so i hope you'll enjoy it too you could give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video and uh, follow me on instagram for uh, updates this week of the exciting things ahead for pay it forward lots of exciting things happening make sure to come and show me your colors this week i want to see these little bags and you can do that by joining our facebook group um, or you can share your creations i'll put the link in the description box below so you can come and be a part of that pay it forward family and uh, share your creations and see what everybody else is doing um, and that's always very encouraging. So thank you all. Thank you all my uh, All my subscribers and big welcome to all of my new subscribers wherever you are in the world I might I hope you stay safe and uh, And are being creative and I'm wishing you a very colorful week this week um, So everybody keep being creative pay all those beautiful things forward and until next time it is hooroo for me